John 16, verse 8. You guys will turn there to John 16, 8. John 16, 8 tells us that the Holy Spirit will convict them will convict the world of sin. And so to help us understand, firstly, marriage is an institution that belongs to God, that he allows us to share with each other, with our other half, okay? The dictionary defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman, and it's instituted and it's ordained by God. It's a lifelong relationship between one man as husband and one man and one woman as wife. Genesis 127, 28, and pardon my haste, but Genesis 127 through verse 28 states, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Yes. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Like, Brothers and sisters, one of the things about marriage that we sometimes forget is God is very, very serious. He does. If, when, if it's in the book, it's in the book. Yeah. And we right. should follow what it says without question. Yeah. It's not, right. There's not mistakes in here. There's not errors here. Right. And he gave us this word, conviction. And I feel that that's a very, very strong part of what God wants us to have. Yeah. John 16 states of when he, it says that he will reprove, convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. Now, if we look at this, we have to understand that sin, conviction, is not a feeling or a sense of alarm foreboding of divine punishment. These feelings are commonly felt in the hearts and minds of sinners, which is all of us. Right. You know, if we're truthful to ourselves, we're all sinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying that, that's not for me. Yeah. That's what the book says. Yeah. All of us are gonna come short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fall short. Where is it? Okay? It says, these feelings are commonly felt in the hearts and minds of sinners. True conviction. Of sin is something different. Okay? It's, it's different. Conviction is just not knowing right and wrong. It is not an agreement with a statement or a proposal to do something about Scripture's teaching about sin. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people read the Bible and are fully aware that the wages of sin yeah. is death. All right. All right. Romans 6.23 states that. Changes are that many know that no immoral, impure, or greedy person has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. And that's from Ephesians 5, 5. Amen. Okay? Amen. They may even know that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That's Psalm 9, 17. And, you know, Despite all the knowledge, people continue to live in sin. Me included. Paul struggled with this. He said the more he tried not to, it seemed like the more he did. They understand the consequences of their sin, but they continue to live in sin. But they are a long way from being convicted of their sins if the truth is said, told. We are experiencing more than a bit of conscience or anxiety 
at the thought of judgment or awareness of hell, then we truly don't, or we have missed the conviction right. of sin. Right. We're trying to rationalize. We're trying to accept yeah, yeah, yeah. our yeah. sin yeah. and come up with stuff. Yeah, yeah. That truly, we've missed the conviction of sin. So what is real conviction? The Bible tells us. Okay. That's the beauty of Christ. All right. yeah. he, he exposes us to our sin, but he doesn't leave us there. All right. he, he says, and I'll say this again, conviction is a noun. It's a strong belief. It's an article of faith, an unshakable belief in something without need for proof or evidence. All right. Convict means to convince someone of the truth, to reprove, which is convict, to accuse, refute, or cross-examine a witness. The Holy Spirit acts yeah. as a prosecuting attorney, if you will, yeah. who exposes evil, reproves evildoers, and convinces people that they need a savior. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be convicted is to feel the sheer wickedness of sin. We feel it right here. Yeah. It takes our breath away. No, no. It makes us ill. It hurts us. This happens when we have seen God's beauty. All right. It's his purity and his holiness. Yeah. Yeah. When we've seen these things, yeah. We're guilty. Mm -hmm. We're convicted. Mm -hmm. We should be, I mean, the finish, the sentencing stage should be next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're guilty. Yeah. And there's not a brother or sister, anyone on this earth who can deny yeah. they're yeah. guilty. Yeah. But again, Christ comes through yeah. and he helps us to get to where we need to get. Yeah. 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 And when we recognize that sin cannot dwell with God, Mm -hmm. That also moves us forward. And it really lets us look at ourselves. When we look at ourselves after seeing the beauty and the wonder and the awe of God, man, we see filth. We see shame. Yeah. Yeah. Anguish. Yeah. We see a lot of things. You know, uh, Psalm 5, 4 says that sin cannot dwell within God. When Isaiah stood in the presence of God, he was immediately, immediately overwhelmed by his own sinfulness. He said, woe to me. I am ruined. He didn't come in there thinking that. But he was in the presence of God. Yeah. And he's ruined now. Amen. Amen. For I am a man of unclean lips. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yeah. And my eyes have seen the King. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord Almighty. And that's in Isaiah 6, 5. To be convicted is to experience the dreadfulness of sin. Mm -hmm. Like Joseph, who felt temptation, he cried out, How could I do this? Great evil and sin against God. That's in Genesis 39.9. We are convicted when we become mindful of, of much our sin dishonors God, or how much our sin dishonors God. When David was convicted by the Holy Spirit, all right, all right. he cried out, against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. That's in Psalm 51.4. Joseph, David, these are highly, highly esteemed men that we study, that we read and admire. But like us, they had their low, low points in life. David wasn't allowed to build the house of God. And you would have, he had it in his heart. He wanted to do it. 
Well, you're not allowed. David saw his sin as an insult to a holy God. We are convicted when we become intentionally aware of the wrath it exposes to our souls. That's Romans 1.18, Romans 2.5, when the, the Philippian jailer, when he fell at the apostles' feet, he cried, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He was under conviction. He was under conviction. And you got to feel for the man because... We've all been there. Yes. That's why we're here. Yes. We've all been there. We've had our low, low moments. And just to be allowed to continue you, yes. tells you the awesomeness, the beauty of our Lord and Savior. And he was certain that without a Savior, he would die. When the Holy Spirit convicts people of their sin, he represents the righteous judgment of God. That's Hebrews 4.12. Mm -hmm. yes, There's no appeal to this verdict. Mm -hmm. Tom Henry can get in his plane like his commercial show, and he can come and defend you against God, but <laughs> all of us are in trouble then. Yeah. 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 We're going to go home without that plane. <laughs> no one can help us when we've been convicted. When the Holy, people, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. He represents the righteous judgment of God. There's no appeal to this verdict. The Holy Spirit not only convicts people of sin, but thank God he brings us to repentance. Amen. He brings us to repentance, and that's Acts 17, 30, and Luke 13, 5. The Holy Spirit brings to light our relationship to God. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to our sin and opens our hearts to receive His grace. That's Ephesians 2.8. We praise the Lord for the conviction of sin. Without it, there could be no salvation. There could be no salvation. No one is saved apart from the Spirit's convicting mm -hmm. and regenerating work in our hearts. The Bible teaches that all people are by nature rebels against God mm -hmm. and hostile to Jesus Christ. I don't have to tell you this. See the news? You hear what's going on in every community now. It's rampant. <laughs> they are dead in trespasses and sins. We're told by Ephesians 2.1. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. It's like a magnet. Positive and negative. We can't be... <coughs> All positives, because there'll be no movement. John 6, 44 states that. Part of that draw to Jesus is a conviction of sin. And guys, there is so much more that I could, that I could read to you. But uh, again, I'm grateful for the opportunity that uh, Brother Fred has, has given me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Privilege. Yeah. Honored. But more than that, guys, I'm humble. Yeah. 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 I want to just say that Josephine and I have survived our marriage. And we survived it for many, many years as people that were we didn't have access, well, we had access to the Bible, but our church didn't teach that. And I want to say this, and please, please understand where I'm coming from. I, as a young man, wanted to become a priest. I was a Catholic. And when 
I saw Josephine walk by, bye bye being a priest. <laughs> <laughs> tried and tried for years and years and years to become a deacon and for whatever reason it didn't happen. And so I looked at that as a failure on my part. And staying in the word. Staying in the word, brothers and sisters. Amen. Will cleanse Amen. Your mind, it'll calm your heart. Yes. 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 But guys, we have to understand that God is not playing with marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. We gave vows to God. Yes. I promise God that I would protect this woman, love her in sickness and in health. Yes. Yes. And you know the hardest thing about marriage, guys, is unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that fall us. We never know when they're going to come. Yeah. Everything is going beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're yeah. on each other's throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the unforeseen appearances. Well, my wife is going through Parkinson's. Bless her heart. And I think she's going up the stage. And she's very hurt by that. And so am I, because it's hard to care for someone when you don't know what it is. You know, you can read all you can about a disease and, and what have you, but as a layman, a non-professional like us, yeah. if we go to the world, there's counselors, and there's people that tell you everything but what you need. Yeah. But thank Jesus that he made himself available to and guys, this is the first time I've been a lecturer. I read little bitty parts of the Bible at church and things like this, but this is the first time Amen. that I've actually. Hey.